What's up guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Louis and in today's video, I want to share with you guys how we can analyze or read a balance sheet. The idea of today's video is to save you as a investor or beginner investor a lot of time so that you don't have to go and read a book like this. Um, obviously this is very time consuming and not everyone has the time to do that. So the purpose of this video is to help you understand what to look for in a balance sheet, how it works and how do we actually analyze it. So before we jump into it, I first want to explain to you guys what a balance sheet is. And essentially a balance sheet is one of three financial documents that a company is obligated to share with the public. This will help us as the investors to determine the financial position of that said company. The balance sheet consists of three main factors, which is assets, liabilities and total shareholder equity. The way these three numbers balance out is very important and this will ultimately help us determine the financial position of the company. So I am a visual learner and it helps me a lot to see something in front of me. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to jump into my computer and show you guys how we can read and analyze a balance sheet. Before we do that, the best place you can get access to balance sheets is either on that specific company's website and you can download their annual report or you can actually just go to Yahoo Finance and you can look at the balance sheet and other financial documents for free. Okay, so when we go to Yahoo Finance, we can go to the top at the search bar and type in the company that we want to analyze. I'm going to analyze Delta Airlines today and their ticker symbol is DAL. Okay, so there's obviously a lot of information that pops up, but today we're only going to click on the financials tab and this is basically where it shows us the three financial documents, the income statement, balance sheet and cash flow. All of these documents can be viewed annually or quarterly, but for today's video we're going to stick with the annual um, report. So let's click on balance sheet and we'll see a lot of stuff that pops up and at first it looks very overwhelming but let me just break it down for you guys. So like I explained previously the three main factors is total assets, total liabilities and total equity or shareholder equity. So we're going to start with the top one which is total assets. When I expand total assets, you'll see it consists of two new tabs, which says current assets and total non-current assets. So total assets is basically a combination of these two. And let's just drop down the current assets. Current assets is any asset that can be sold within 12 months for actual cash. So this basically just means it's assets that can be liquidated within a period of 12 months. So when we click on the cash and cash equivalents tab, we'll see where they show short term investments and cash and cash equivalents. These two combined will equal the cash and cash equivalents and short term investment amount. So like I said, these are short term investments and short term assets that can be liquidated into cash within 12 months. The next tab will be receivables and this consists of accounts receivable. So account receivable is money that is not yet received, but the product or the service is already delivered. So the next thing that we look at is inventory and in Delta Airlines case inventory might be um, airplane repair parts or even jet fuel or whatever it might be in that specific industry. Next we get prepaid assets and this is basically items or assets that's already been paid for. So when we go to total non-current assets, these are all assets that can't be sold within one year and it will take longer than 12 months before it can be liquidated. The first thing we see here is net PPE, which also stands for property, plant and equipment. And these are all stuff that can't be sold within 12 months. Examples of this can be property or factories 
or even equipment. Something that we can look at is accumulated depreciation and you'll see it shows it's in a minus here. So this basically means Delta Airlines is depreciating their property plant and equipment at 18 of minus 18 billion dollar every year. And the idea of depreciation is exactly the same when buying a car. As soon as you buy a car, it will obviously depreciate with time. And this is a, a type of expense that a company can write off on their balance sheet. Next, we see goodwill and other intangible assets. Goodwill essentially means if Delta Airlines acquires another company which is worth $10 billion and Delta Airlines decides to pay $12 billion to that specific company, um, $2 billion above your initial $10 billion will then be um, allocated as goodwill. Goodwill is a soft asset and this is something Warren Buffett says you should definitely be aware of. Another thing is the other intangible assets and the easiest way to explain this is an asset that is not tangible meaning it's not something that we can actually sell. Think of something like Coca-Cola the brand name of Coca-Cola and the brand around Coca-Cola is a big intangible asset, but we can't really include this as an asset. So these two things are very important to look at on a balance sheet. So if we see goodwill and intangible assets uh, makes a large portion of our total assets, we kind of need to be wary and just be aware of what the amount is. The next thing is investments and advances and these can be long-term equity investments made by the company. The next thing that we see on the balance sheet is non-current deferred assets. Deferred basically means it has not yet happened and here we can see that non-current deferred taxes is 1.29 billion dollars. This means that this is taxes that needs to be paid by Delta Airlines but they are deferring paying these taxes. Other non-current assets can be a long list of things depending on which industry your company is in. Unfortunately, Yahoo Finance doesn't show the full list of other non-current assets. So if you want to have a look at this, you will have to go to the company's annual report. The next thing that we need to look at is total liabilities. And again, there's two tabs under liabilities, which is current liabilities and again, non-current liabilities. This is kind of the same as your assets, but let me show you guys what I mean. So the first thing that we can see here is payable and accrued expenses. So these are basically accounts that needs to be paid. Exactly the same with the total assets where there's accounts receivable. We also get a liability which is accounts payable. This is money that is owed by Delta to its creditors. The next thing is accrued expenses and these are basically a buildup of expenses from the company that still needs to be paid. The next tab that we can see here is current debt and capital lease um, obligations. So current debt is another thing that's very important and this is debt that is due within 12 months. So the current borrowings, these are debt that the company has that needs to be paid within 12 months. Underneath the current borrowings, we can see lease obligations, but these are basically obligations from Delta Airlines that needs to be paid. Um, this can be properties that they are leasing or offices that they are leasing countrywide. Under that, we can see current deferred liabilities. So like the current assets, these are current deferred revenue and thus it is showing up on our liabilities. Under that we can see other current liabilities and again we'll have to jump to our actual balance sheet on the annual report to see exactly what this is. Total non-current liabilities will be the next tab and these consist of long-term debt, non-current deferred liabilities and employer benefits, also other non-current liabilities. So these all in, is included in the total non-current liabilities. And again, non-current basically just means that it's assets 
or, or liabilities that is not due within 12 months. So this is basically long-term debt that is due after 12 months. Again, a lease agreement after 12 months. And next we can see non-current deferred liabilities. And again, here it, not, it doesn't actually show something, but um, let's have a look at the deferred revenue, which is non-current, meaning that it is not uh, due within 12 months. Employee benefits um, can consist of pension funds and other benefits that an employee might receive, which will show up on the liability section on a balance sheet. The next thing which is very important is our total equity um, or shareholders equity or also known as stockholders equity. So stockholders equity will consist of capital stock or common stock um, and, and this is something that we need to have a look at, especially the retained earnings. Retained earnings is um, all the net income that the company can save during a financial year after paying dividends, etc. Here we can see stuff like additional paid in capital, treasury stock and gains and losses not affecting retained earnings. So the stockholders equity is something that's important for us to see. Let me show you if I open my calculator and um, we want to work out and confirm what the stockholder equity is. This will basically be, let me just collapse this. This will basically be our total assets, which is, let's say 70, Two four five nine billion minus our total liabilities, which is six eight five seven two oh, six eight five seven two, and this will equal our total um, shareholder equity. So only three point eight billion dollars um, is the shareholder equity position for Delta Airlines, and this is actually not too good. Um, Usually a airline company has a lot of debt because it's a highly leveraged business. Usually the stockholder equity doesn't look too great. So I wanted to show you guys a bad looking balance sheet so you guys can actually see what the things are that I have a look at. Um, something that's really important to me is to look at the current assets and then the current liabilities. And what we can do here is the first thing is I want to know if a company's current assets can cover its current liabilities. And clearly we can see here that Delta Airlines has less current assets than the current liabilities. And if something should go wrong, this company can get into a lot of problems. So the calculation that we can use to determine whether this is good or not is to take Delta Airlines total assets which is 15.94 billion and divide it with its current liabilities which is 20.96 billion dollars. Here we can see that it shows it's 0.76 which is really really bad. Um, to give you guys an idea, when investors look at this ratio, it needs to be above 1. Basically, if it's above 1, it means that the current assets is more than the current liabilities. A good ratio will be when it's above 2 and an excellent one would be above 3. And in this case, we can see that it definitely doesn't look too good. Another thing that we have to be aware of is to kind of find out in which direction the balance sheet of the company is moving. And again, what we want to see is, is that the assets is actually growing. Here we can see that it has been growing and then again it slows down. Usually what happens if your assets is growing, your liabilities is growing as well. And if a company's liabilities is growing and there's no assets that is growing, this is definitely a negative thing for that specific company. So let me just show you guys another example, um, which is completely different. And this is Google, um, also known as Alphabet. 
I really like this company and what they are doing and obviously if you follow Google or if you have watched some of my other videos you would know that I'm a big fan of Google. Um, when we click on financials I'll just jump to the balance sheet and we'll do that exact same calculation that we've done with Delta and we'll use it with Google. So let me just open my calculator and what we'll do is we'll use Google's total current assets which is $188 billion which is a lot and we'll divide it by um, Google's current liabilities which is $64 billion. Something that I forgot to mention is you might think that this is let's say 188 million but all of the numbers is shown in thousands which means this is 188 million thousand which is um, basically 188 billion. But anyway let's quickly do that calculation. So we'll use 188 billion and divided by Google's current liabilities of 64,000 and that gives us a ratio of almost three. And this is insane because like I said to you guys, if this is above two, it means that it's a really good and stable business and Google almost reaches three, which shows us that Google is in an excellent financial position. Obviously Google is a massive company and if we have a look at their assets, you can see that it has been growing. Their liabilities has obviously also been growing, but their assets is growing much faster. We can also see that the total equity that Google has is growing tremendously. And this is a vital sign for us as investors that the company is very healthy. So with that said guys, thank you so much for staying until the end. A balance sheet can look like a document that's very difficult to understand, but once you break down each and every item and try to understand what each of them means, you might get a good understanding of the company's financial position. With that said, I'll see you guys in the next one and uh, thank you so much for watching.